to, but other times where you show me like these were good pins, where it's like I had the enemy or my team was like kind of set up already. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. How do I like get more into like being consistent about that? Where it's like I pin into you know really good places where my team can you know can get him. I guess. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? What do you can? What do you can do? Even based on our previous live session, what was really important? Uh, how do you how timing? Do, uh, timing. Okay. How do you get that right? What do you need to keep an eye on? Look, look, look around before yes. you do, uh, do anything. You need to look around. <laughs> simply. <laughs> yeah, it's simple answer. Right? The, the, it's hard to do con consistently. Yeah. When you're in a rush in the fight, you notice yeah. the good targets like, engage on as well. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like half a second you're already, like losing the fight if you don't really like yep. you know. Yep, I totally get it. You need to just find this downtime and scouting right moments. That's about that, and you also need to increase the speed uh, with with how you collect in information. Because at start, it might seem slow, you thinking, okay, this angle is ready, another angle is ready, and then this third angle is ready, and then it's kind of too slow. But then, once you apply that habit more and more, you become faster. It's like, it's always good to start as slow and good, rather than being fast and bad, if that makes sense. Later, you <laughs> will build up the speed, you know? Mm, what? Ah, uh, yes. I see, yeah, I see it. Yeah, <laughs> you see what I mean. Where, yeah, I, I. It's just really hard to do. I don't know why it's hard to do. It's just is. That makes sense. That's uh, that's the main point. We just wanna kind of build that habit. Yeah, make sure you do that consistently. Once you notice, you can scout consistently 80 percent of your time 80 percent of the fights in multiple games i think that's where you tell yourself okay kind of get that that get that concept i'm doing that automatically and should be good really but yeah. you can go with that as well just when when you can scout is there is anything else you struggle with Landing my shatters, I guess. I know, like, landing, like, getting a kill with one is really good, right? With your shatter. Yeah. But it's sure. worth it, right? Yeah. Most but, of the time. They, like, say if I'm versus a, uh, another Ryan, right? I'm versus mm -hmm. another Ryan. Like, he always has his shield up. You know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> But it like I I can wait you know I can wait for my shot until he uh -huh. drops but it, it never drops it like nobody shoots at the shield it's always like full he always had full okay. HP shield so and like, and then, how do you deal and with then that? just just well, it, I think it, because it I, can I, be the case it can be the case against some compositions where he might actually have the shield up more and then what do you do about it yeah what, what do you think. Um, well, I've seen some, like, guides or, like, clips of, like, you can just jump shatter over, like, you know, on Ryan, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, sure, you can. <laughs> this is, like, small <laughs> technique. Okay, okay. Well, uh, anything else? Uh, I, I mean, we could do the Overwatch 1, you know, old style, where it's, like, a flank shatter, you know? Where you go in an off angle and then shatter. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's even more important when you play Overwatch 2, because... You really don't have to face the Ryan most of the time because you're really tanking meaningful damage when you're trying to tank the Ryan. Is he really meaningful to tank? Not really most of the time, right? So you have to go on those other angles and then enemy Ryan, he might answer to your aggression, but if he does, then he's really not applying pressure to your backline and your backline gets an easy kill most of the time. So... Your idea is to a lot of times flank, off angle, deal with important angles, shatter somebody long. That's one. Yeah, you get around the shield by taking a different angle. And even this small technique with the jump shatter, yeah, it's sort of the same thing. But 
a really niche. Yeah, sometimes you can always sneak around the corners, kind of just hide it around somewhere. That's the same idea. Yeah, we apply the same concept, getting around the shield. But uh, the second is pretty simple. You just want a time fire strikes. So it's back from all which one. Uh, I don't think a lot of people do that, even though which do they don't pay attention to it. But if you look at the fire strike animation, it never can be cancelled with the shield. So you just want to kind of wait for this moment once his hammer kind of does the does the animation, and then you notice the fire strike, you instantly shatter anybody behind him and him right away that's why good ryan's that, that, yeah that's that's what i try to do too where it's like when they fire strike exactly. i it, like i shatter right but it's always kind of late you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah then you like, just need like, to i'm not fast enough yeah this is this then it might be the it might be just practice right put more time but then we also want to see where you put your attention exactly what your attention is on is it really okay. on uh, the Ryan Shatter, no. The Ryan Shatter, yeah, it might be that you're paying attention to Fire Strike animation itself. You're looking at the fire, but you should look at the hammer animation, right? Because okay, okay, it's fast. Yeah, yeah, because this this is like a lot of times we going over that. Anybody who explain dps they're, because DP, DP, dps players they're pretty squishy and if you're playing something like tracer for example you really have to blink at the right time and that's why a lot of times i say you have to pay attention to attention of the player are they looking at you and animations not bullets not okay. shots yeah <laughs> so that can be helpful too okay uh so are we going over the game then or anything else you want yeah. to mention I think I think. Uh, One else, yeah. Oh, you know Rhino when you, like he needs well he doesn't need but he wants I guess uh, supports that have like what Anas you know perhaps how do I deal with it when I have Brigham Mercy type comps or Lucio Mercy or yeah you yeah know? I get it simply less healing so it's just your uptime is gonna uptime with the hammer is gonna be lower simple as that you're still gonna swing but you're gonna swing less <laughs> that's all <Okay. laughs> yeah the, the end. you should more oh kind of uh, not really I would just say you plan away so you recharge your you, you play more park uh, uh poke than uh, on Ryan yeah you can put it this way it's just kind of you let's use the word like you're playing defensive in the way so use your corners use your shield sometimes yeah you're gonna be using your fire strikes more and such but you definitely have to go in and swing it's just you notice you're not gonna do it as much if you yeah compared to when you have bap when you have anna even kiriko actually yeah kiriko does mm -hmm. quite quite a lot of healing as well Mm hmm yep any any other questions <laughs> um when is like there's a difference between feeding and not getting value <laughs> right but feeding and getting value right oh uh, uh -huh. i don't know how to different uh like see that you know what i mean like what's the difference between that what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, obviously, uh, feeding while getting value is getting a kill, you know, before you die, or or I don't know, waste an alt or waste all their cooldowns. I guess that's getting value let me, value before you die. Let let me let me ask you that. Let's say you go and the enemy spawn while your team is setting up angles around the point. You force five cooldowns in the spawn. Is it value or feeding? I guess feeding. Because mm -hmm. uh, they're in spawn, they can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. So see how that depends. Right? It depends on the context mm -hmm. where the fight is, especially. That's what we're going to look at, into, I guess, a little bit more. Because... Feeding is ultimately you get value, but you get value like where nobody can use that sort of 
well or not as many people can use that i usually like to say you want to keep an eye on can most of your team contribute on what you're doing you okay. might be by yourself sure it might be that you're going on one person on the flank but if your team can get value out of that because they rush the rest of the enemy team then it can work quite well yeah this is what you gotta pay attention to just making sure you're trading resources with intention like once you traded resources your team can capitalize on that yeah that's that's value if they cannot do that then it's feeding <laughs> kind of okay. like that yeah <laughs> great okay any other questions that's it i guess that's it. for okay. now yeah if you have any let me know <laughs> so it's fine okay let's see uh you send me the game nice and i'm screen sharing oh by the way something i wanted to ask is it fine if i record the session and potentially upload it on youtube or metify just just asking uh it doesn't matter I, I can also like i would watch my own too just to like you know like oh i forgot something let me like look at the video again sure you know I mean? sure yeah i'm at the moment i'm uploading sessions on metify quite frequently so I think there's a way you can look at the videos. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's start looking at this one here. Uh, can you see my stream just fine? Is it working for you? Okay. Ready for battle. Uh, yeah, yeah, it works, it works. Okay. You have the quality drops or anything like that let me know but yeah let's see so in this game you're saying you tried to apply the timing but it felt kind of slow and your team was dying while he was trying to do that right i mean it is a seven minute game, seven minute game. <laughs> so so we were getting rolled well uh-huh so <laughs> where were the games where you tried to apply the timing but then it was kind of tough it was kind of hard this one uh-huh okay. i think it was it was this one yeah okay where it's wait, like wait, wait. you rolled or you got rolled <laughs> i know i got rolled okay then it's might be a good one <laughs> all right okay so we started with the five strikes first i think it's fine mm -hmm. then there's this chord this is kind of tough play around yeah you get a couple of picks this is nice take space because you got two kills so that's good enough a little bit too greedy on life here but that's okay can get away with that as long as you have armor okay mm -hmm. oh somewhere got a tick it's interesting yeah. mm. okay that's why we're going in Mm -hmm. Okay, let's watch a little bit more. Somebody's out trying to find her. You found her. Okay. Have you shot her? Let's see what you do with that. Okay. I don't know if I should shot her here. So it's kind of shadow this like right here. Yeah, it, yeah, right here. Yeah. Mm hmm. What do you think? Maybe you well, shot him out what happens. Well, I was thinking of shattering when he uh, went towards that corner. Because mm -hmm. I, I would have shattered uh, Zen. But I was thinking Zen would have had ult. So I was like, I'll save it after mm -hmm. he uses ult. Mm -hmm. So that's why sure. I didn't ult. Okay. So Zenyatta's, Zenyatta's ultimate's uh, kind of concern, right? Uh, yeah. Is there anything else that can stop your shadow? uh the grip the grip exactly so you have to keep an eye especially when you play against life your solo shattering is okay but you have to make sure he use the grip or you just shattered life fever i think that's how you can get around that <laughs> because he cannot use the grip on himself so this is something to play around yeah definitely i don't think you should shatter then yeah because you mentioned all of that you just kind of kind of wait to force out something and then shatter later you might shatter multiple people as well so it's not gonna be 
as easy with ultimates and the life grip. Yeah. Just you shout at squishy members, you can just you can still pin somebody. Okay, so this is when it's kind of just ton ton of pressure on you and we kind of struggle. Okay, so let's just go back a little and I think maybe let's just start with the spin right there. So once you once you won the fight, because I think the first fight went quite okay for you, but then right after here. They got a tick. Yeah, they got a tick. It's kind of unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So, it's kind of here, Rish. What do you think? Yeah, the Bastion. Mm -hmm. So, the two at four. Zen. That's first, yeah. The Zen Discord. Mog there as well, right? So, what do you think you should be doing with your pin here? Is it okay enough for us to look for this kind of pin here? Like the like you did. Yeah, it kind of works, uh, sort of, right? But, yeah. But yeah, what do you think? Uh, it's well, first is like it's really good to get short pins, right? Like that's that's Mostly. what you should be looking for. Yeah. Uh sure. This is the one thing. Okay. So it's not short pin. Mm-hmm. And you should have just uh, waited for the turret. Should have waited for the turret as well. Sure. So I'm just gonna. Yeah. Sure. Anything else? Um. Then yeah, wait until the Discord orb is finished and they go in. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Silver can hack you. Exactly. But. So all of this pressure can happen, right? So see, this is this is where we're looking at the cooldown trade. Yeah, you getting pressured really hard, and there's a lot of stuff can happen to you, right? You're paying attention to the enemy team and all this stuff. This is something you could have played around, like the bastion through the hack, the discord. That's that's something to keep an eye on. But what about your team? Can they be active when you're looking for this kind of pin there? I feel like it's a trick question because I I want to say yes because look where my team is right. Mm -hmm. I have a uh Torb on the right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well yeah, and like my supports are like with me. I guess kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the kind of applying pressure, right? To us, the question is really: Is it enough big quality pressure? Are we really getting this good cooldown trade there? Yeah, and by looking at this, so it's this to reform this scored right now versus your team's pressure, which is done this way. Uh, Torp is actually not there yet. Yeah. So what do you think? Who is gonna win this cooldown trade here? Us, because we don't really need to do anything, right? We could just wait until they waste their cooldown on us, and then yeah, push right after, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. See, uh, you. <clears throat> You can think about this idea of, I think, yeah, thinking about the kill zone can be quite valuable. So what is the kill zone is, I usually like to describe it. It's uh, the place where your team can actively do pressure, where your team can actively use cooldowns and be effective with their range. And you can also look at it like, you have angle set up and everything. Yeah, the kill zone is where it's easier to kill things. Yeah, and it's kind of easier. Like if we talk about angles, let's say somebody's there and then somebody's over here, because your kill zone is set up there, it's easier to get kills if you have A and B set up, and you have quality pressure with your cooldowns. Yeah, so that's for one. If we're talking about your team, yeah, you want to apply pressure in the kill zone. Okay. And the second thing is just about the enemy team. You want to keep an eye on when they read the week, on when they actually use some of their stuff, they enter your kill zone, and then you can shut them down, basically. Yeah, you're not shutting them down right away, but you're kind of waiting for them to do something. Let's say Zarya walked in in the kill zone, she using bubble. Well, you can just wait it out and then apply pressure later or bastion use the to it form you can just wait it out and then apply pressure slightly later as well yeah so first idea making sure enemy is weak second make sure you have most of your resources set up and i think here 
it might be not the best kill zone for you yet. You not set up the best angles and pressure yet, maybe. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Your torp is kind of not ready yet, for example. Yeah, and you only have these people pressuring okay. from one side actively now. But the question is what you can do about it. Can you as a tank set up better kill zone potentially? Can you do something and just yeah. make sure you apply pressure at the right time and the right place, sort of. Yeah, like, what, what's your thoughts? Yeah, what, what do you think? Because to me, this is like definitely not not the best timing of mm -hmm. the pressure. Yeah, um, maybe not the best place as well. The kill zone can change the new situation, but yeah, what do you think? What you should be doing here? Um, holding a corner basically. Holding corner, which one? So you went in. B one. Where Torb is right now. Mm -hmm. Or where my supports are. Okay, so see, this is this is where it's kind of tricky, right? You, you, this is this is where this thing which you mentioned comes into play. You play with your team, but then they die, right? <laughs> I think this yeah. is where it's gonna happen, most likely, right? And I would agree with that. Like to me, if you play with them, then you're not creating enough pressure in the kill zone so there was one idea i mentioned about the kill zone is that you want to have as many angles as possible now so i i guess the bridge then the bridge the for example of, the top of the bridge yep. yeah go on the bridge uh go hide here or something and this way you save your resources but you apply pressure when you actually have your angles set up if you just pay attention to those and Again, making sure your team is active with their cooldowns, the enemies, they are weak as well, and then apply pressure. Yeah, same thing, but set up better. It's kind of, you go in a fight, scout the information, scout, then set up to do pressure in the kill zone, and then engage. Now, what are you doing? It's kind of you scout a little and then you engage, right? Where you're skipping oh, this set up. Yeah, you, you well, okay. you kind of do well. You kind of set up like even here you did the setup, but you can set up even better. I think you can get okay. better spots, and then because you set up, you save your resources, and then you can apply pressure at the better time. Like go on the bridge, okay. turret is wasted, and then look for the same pin. Really nice, okay. really good. Okay. And your team yeah. will have enough time to do angles. So, okay, so I'm doing like I'm do I'm following the steps right. It's just I'm skipping the you mm -hmm. know I'm skipping other steps. Yes. Which like I, yeah I'm, yeah. Okay. Because I really like the pressure part. That's how you have to play, but you just kind of have to be more disciplined <laughs> with all of that. Yeah. yeah, it's really I'm not used to that. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, the pressure to... is really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to having a how do I say it kind of discipline because Ryan, right? When you when you know you're at advantage, you know when you're um, you know have full resources. You have, you know when you have nano, you just want to go in. Yes. You know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. True. That's what Ryan makes. That's what makes Ryan fun, I guess. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And here you don't have nano, but you can wait for the angles to be set up. You can wait for the steward to end up. Yeah, and even Discord to be sent somewhere else, maybe. You're gonna be not Discorded while you're just getting into that space. Obviously, you can be pushed, and that's where it's interesting. See, you set up an angle in the way, so your team is coming from A, Torp might come from B, and you're coming from C. You, because you're a different angle, you set up more pressure in the kill zone, and what it does a lot of times, because the enemies, they're gonna be thinking, what are we pushing, guys? We're pushing these guys, or these guys? Yeah, or this guy up there. A lot of times, they're gonna huh. push you, and you kind of bait the enemy to keep playing at the kill zone. What these guys are gonna do? Some of these guys are gonna walk in towards this corner and try to shoot you, for example. But because they do that, they walk towards your angles at A and B. And see, it, it, it's because you active with your position it's because you set up properly now your team is not gonna die but if you keep playing uh -huh. with your team at a or b then it's probably gonna be big kind of 
chance yeah it's gonna be big chance somebody dies randomly so see okay. it's kind of like a tracer mindset yeah, why tracer that, that's, that's, yeah. that's kind of weird because like right you know everybody everybody says oh like you're right you need to like stay with the no. team no 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 yeah. no 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 no, no. <laughs> not at the highest level says. yeah it does a fundamental level if you're in diamond sure <laughs> it's something even in masters <laughs> even in high masters too uh, don't don't listen to them <laughs> okay like, i know i know because I, I watched uh cloudy right his guys where it's like he mentioned that ryan's kind of like a dive tank now and i'll watch too um, right well it's uh, it's the same mindset even though which one is just an oh which two you can be more active and opportunistic with all this stuff you do yeah so yeah uh, think about what you do with depression the angles it's like similar to tracer you set up on this flank angles and why tracer is really annoying like tell me why tracer is uh -huh. in the back and really annoying what that it's makes her annoying <laughs> it's <laughs> she has a recall <laughs> uh i guess she just it's like a mosquito, right? Where it's like always occurring, yes. and like the the sports get distracted, and and the tank won't get heals. Can good tracer destruct without pressuring even? Yes, just by being there, just like yes. a tank, right? Yes, Presence. exactly. That's what you do. You distract an enemy. They look at you and they say, "This crazy Ryan on the bridge. Can we get him? Why, why is he there? Why is he there? Exactly. Why is he there? He's <laughs> like a lot of people. Even uh, when I was playing Ryan, to tell me you play Ryan like a tracer, but you know, I, I'm saying this is this is how you play, right? <laughs> this, is, this is how. Well, you're not really waiting for your team to die and then pressure like the tracer does you need some sort of destruction with the tracer but you uh, use uh, like new well, destruction yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was gonna say uh like what if it's like where they don't go after you but they go after your, you know like oh he doesn't they don't, they don't have a tech in the front let's push in mm -hmm. and then my team ends up dying and yeah, then they but blame then me oh like that. we need a front line no 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 no. You, you you need to pressure the right time that's what you need you need tank at the right time if your oh, team okay. died and you didn't pressure them that was a mistake or you didn't do enough okay. quality pressure i'm just gonna give you an example let me let me find if i have any good game so we mentioned kind of setting up on those flank angles more <laughs> right i might get reported by just playing that <laughs> uh not not really you shouldn't no 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 it should be okay just make sure you still doing that like those those flanks it's not similar to tracer right as tracer you can be self-sufficient and exist on your own here if you're disposition on the bridge you're still going to be in line of sight of your team like you're not in the side of your bab so it's fine you're in line of sight of your torp so they can support right it's just you kind of choosing those flanky angles mm, 180 angles a little bit more and you pulling the attention away from um the enemy okay i'm just gonna use this as an example let me see i think there was one of the my games or something okay so mm -hmm. mm, yeah probably this can be a good one might be not the best but i'm just gonna find something okay so it's the rather game but the same idea is here use ryan because you're playing more like a trace you're pulling off enemy attention you're dragging the attention towards you and your team can survive because of it so see even a drug you can apply the same idea people might tell you we need you in the front line on the card but in reality no you need to pull the enemy attention away and kind of bathe them bathe them to uh, uh, exist in the kill zone make make sure they wasting time um in the kill zone so for example here some of the team they usually like to push the card right so what you can do you can just take this rotation and go around maybe yeah. you see that from a lot of times right he yeah. does this as well but this is this is why it's important you setting up you're not sk skipping steps you scout set up and then engage when your team does something i think i'm gonna make a mistake there though i actually engage a little bit too early so see now our kill zone is here okay and i'm pulling this guy's attention okay i don't want to be wasting my resources though so i need to kind of hide around the corner but this is this is the idea you kind of make sure they pressure you because they pressure you see what happens let's say tracer blinks towards me 
my angles, they instantly have the line of sight of what's happening, right? This, this is what you do. Take 180 angles and bait the enemy to push you in the kill zone, right? Uh. You're not just being defensive. Um, so I just have to take it slow, though. I, I think I'm going here, like, way too early. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to set up kind of 90 degrees pin or something, but then there's no opportunity, so I have to drop. Here, what was the mistake is that I went in too early. I just needed my angles to be a little bit more forward. But this is this is still I, kind of... How do you know that? I, I needed to, oh, you need I needed to, to look around. Yeah, I needed to look around. It's the same mistake as you do, do sometimes, right? So th this is just kind of an all game example. But my, my main point was doing this. See, like this is initial setup. Yeah, don't look at this next part. Just remember this. This is where you set up and then you can look to strike if there's anything to strike. Right now, there's nothing, so you just take more space and repeat the cycle. You scout, set up, so my setup would be inside the building or something, or maybe okay. I can use the corner there, and once my team is ready, we can engage and even go from back, like, all the way right or something. A pin this way. Mm, yeah, there are multiple ways you can do something. Um, let me see. Well, why do you think you should have just waited, to, like, when you were, like, going through the building and then... I ju I, you just no. need to, your angles to be set up. So what is that about this? Your team to be able to do damage. Are they able to do damage now when the on the card? Well, kind of not 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 yet. Not everybody. So if you look at the, that, mm -hmm. I see Genji down there. Yeah, Genji Genji is down there exactly. But we don't have widow set up, for example. Oh, and yeah. I don't even know that. So that's that's the, exactly the mistake they. Okay. It, it's pretty common, but yeah, you have to be precise with all of that. But uh, it's 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 fine. Uh, I'm just I'm gonna see if there's any good example. Like maybe second point, the high ground, might be a good one. Yeah, it's kind of similar. Again, you pressure this top building there. I don't have exact timestamps. I think for this one. Mm, what about here? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, this game might be good example. One second. Just gonna drag this to here. Okay. So this is Vialto. And huh. this is attack, but similar idea can be applied. Your team is looking to stay in the point and pressure from the main most of the time. So what your ideas can be you might go to the doorway and look for the pin this way. Sometimes there's a cheeky idea. Uh -huh. You can look for the environmental kill on somebody, but it's only if you see an opportunity. But if I apply our idea, yeah, making sure you bait an enemy to push you in the kill zone and do 180 kind of uh, pressure a little bit more. So if I'm applying this idea, then I can go on the high ground and just pin this way or something yeah um this this yeah. can work so i think i'm gonna do something similar to that later once my team is in the corner i should have found the pressure there but then yeah i i'm walking up and then i'm looking for the opportunity there's not much of an opportunity i get booped but still this is like sort of cooldown trade and you don't have to really uh, do a lot with the pin get a kill or something you just can apply pressure and destruct an enemy this way because you do you bait them in your kill zone your team can uh get kills done a lot of times but it's just um something to think about in general yeah sometimes they're gonna be cooldowns to stop you like and a sleep dart and everything right but you can always set up somewhere like let's say I I want to fight this space. I can always go all the way left up on the high ground. And then uh -huh. this is going to be 180 angle because my team is pushing at A. Somebody is going to be at B. And then you turn the attention around this way. Mm, for example, if you're on the next point right there. So, yeah, like it's pretty common to fight for this high ground there. Yeah, what what do you do with that? You can leverage this high ground as the opportunity to do this kind of 180 pressure as well, potentially. Um, yeah, I think we're just get, getting we're clearing this high ground anyway, so it should be should be fine. But even this, right? Clearing the position. See where I come from. I come from behind, and I bait this soldier to go on my kill zone. Where my kill zone is is kind of in front of the cart. 
it's where most of my team is they kind of run here and i think i have kiriko with me so when this soldier is gonna stop in the kill zone there's a high chance he's gonna die he might die from me or he might die from somebody from my team like getting slapped see like this is this is what you do with the all of this 180 stuff you just yeah like this soldier might die pretty fast i think he's gonna get around the corner so i'm gonna shout at him but yeah anyway that's all of it makes sense <laughs> Uh, yeah, Makes... it does. Okay, yeah, I think let's just get us more examples, maybe. So yeah, I could have done that 180 then too. Then. Yeah, After this the is third? this is 180. Yeah, exactly. But see, what we skipped is again the setup. The setup. Yeah, we'll skip the setup. Make sure it's more precise. Your angles are ready, and the enemies they can't stop you as much. They're not as active. They're weak. Enemy should be weak, you should be strong. Yeah, like, pretty simple. Yeah, why are you strong? Because you have angles, you have resources. They're weak because they use their resources or whatever. That's always the, the main thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, turret form shouldn't be there. And then maybe the hack will be not as much of an opportunity for them to hack it. Because now that's how they take more space and the, you kind of gonna lose the cooldown trade. Obviously, you're missing one more teammate as well. That's why it hurts too, but <laughs> still. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we watch this. What about the second point? Same thing. Oh, Do you think no. It... I, I don't mm -hmm. remember this. I, I think I shattered nothing. <laughs> hmm. I was thinking of shattering here, but he kept walking to the left mega. Like, I wanted to shatter here. Yeah, just the question is kind of. Do we have. Are we strong in the kill zone? And are they really weak at this point of time, right? So it's just where you think you might do something with your cooldowns. So. What, What's your thoughts about it? So, let's think about from perspective of the kill zone. First of all, where your kill zone is? Where the Malga is. Kind of, my team is on the high ground. Yeah, they have angles on the high ground. Maybe it could be better if they split a little bit, so there's slightly more pressure. Yeah, if somebody comes around the corner, maybe if somebody's in the lab, that's more pressure. Like Alari is yeah, actually be, pretty decent. That'd yeah. be really good, but yeah, but you can I, control I that. You yeah. do that. Yeah, you can control that. Yeah. So this is the setup. Now, the question is, what he can do with your own setup, so kind of bait an enemy to exist and kill zone more. So, what do you think? Um, I guess give up space then? Yeah, probably this point of time, yeah. It's kind of give up space and it's kind of here. Do we need to take space now as well? Okay. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, because uh. this, is, this is where you set up. You scout information and then you set up and think ahead. Okay, what? I, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I... Well, now that you told me about the steps, I skip a lot of the uh, setups. I feel mm -hmm. like exactly yeah so you can invest more time into that like even be more tricky like what about if you go here or something and you just stay and just Wait, can you get up there you, you can just pin from here to here oh and, okay yeah, yeah you're good yeah <laughs> yeah but see this this might seem silly right but it, it works fundamentally why because the enemy they have to be here and because they look around, they're not looking at your team. That's how you save your team. And you're also able to apply pressure easier with your pin and everything. It's just, it's easier for you to drop as well because there's a corner. You can easily hide around all of this here. So it's nice. Yeah? You have to set up a little bit better. Because now this is where a lot of initial pressure comes, but it was not necessary, right, to take that pressure. They're not in the kill zone yet. Your idea is to make yeah. sure the pressure comes when these guys are really in the kill zone um, most of the time. This can be an exception. Sometimes you notice you can get a solo kill on somebody, and that might be worth it. Remember, I think there was an offline review when you're confident you can get a kill on the brig or something, and... If it's pretty stationary, a target especially, you can go on that and do something. But make sure you invest resources 
really if you're confident yeah it's um the only one exception when you kind of not keeping the kill zone in mind i think yeah if you can get a solo kill then fine it still does something because uh, yeah because if you apply pressure on somebody like let's say in the back line you just got the enemy Anna or something like what's gonna happen a lot of times indirectly like because Anna is under pressure her teammates are gonna know that and then they're gonna run towards you so this also works but then because they invest a lot of time, you still can escape because Anna was too far or something. Like, but uh -huh. yeah, it's just mostly solo kill. Like here you can't get a solo kill. So just make sure the kill zone is there and then start the pressure. I think even maybe coming from field angle like this way and yeah. then maybe even staying on the high ground, but then dropping later works. But this is kind of, I, I don't like this idea because we're not setting up an angle, right? So it's better to, as I mentioned, try to play away from your team set up kind of interesting angle of attack Maybe yeah the from stairs a, is actually a pretty good angle yeah 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 try this try this really like find a way to play away from your team set up save your resources and then apply pressure once the kill zone is happening because now you lose a lot of HP and shield right and then you you shatter and you shatter in the kill zone that's why you get a kill on this and yada but now you loan alone cooldowns this is when you should have your cooldowns, basically. Like, imagine you're here. I actually like this space a lot. <laughs> imagine you're here. You drop on these guys, and then there's just no way they, they can survive because you have your full shield and full health, right? And your team is alive as well because you're pulling away a lot of attention like Tracer does a lot of times. Uh, but it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of... You, you can think. You can experiment with the angles. I like the stairs, too. Just see what works. I think you should uh, shatter through that too. Are you talking about what? The, where the stairs are. Yeah, little... yeah, 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 you can, yeah. You're able to shatter just as long as you don't have anything like this here stops the shatter. Uh, this here, it actually climbs a little, if I'm not mistaken, and then it's gonna stop. A stairs shadow goes up simply yeah there's like an idea if there's one meter structure like one meter something stairs it always go up that's why <laughs> there's a map like numbani's third point it might be might seem really weird how the shadow climbs all the way up on those uh, i don't know like pillars or something y y you know there's like a structure on the right around the corner on the third point once you attack that it's uh with the trees and everything, you know, I, I I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Like the 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 the, the high ground thing, that's where uh -huh. the soldier. You, you usually see the soldiers and like some sort of heat skins there, but the the shadow can actually climb there too. I think that's when I saw playing Ryan, after that. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, so now, how you can set up to your advantage, what do you think? So, scout, scout information about yeah. what, about where the kill zone is, and then making sure you set up the best at uh, the best angle on the kill zone. I was thinking of not pushing, but then uh, Sombra died. So I was like, oh, we can go in. Yeah, you can go in, but you have to set up. Right? <laughs> yeah, that right. free, yeah, that's why I said I forget about setting up. Okay, where do you set up? Nowhere. I just go. Like you said, I scout, then I engage. That's what I have. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. But with with all of our information, like once you know that, what you can do. Okay. Here? Um. Set up. Get the high ground. Get the high ground. Do you just stay there? Like no. again. Go go to, to where. Uh, what you mentioned about. Yeah. What about about going that? Here? Yeah. That. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Stay there. Mm -hmm. and, sure. and then just hold the the payload. Cause I think you can like if you, there's like a certain way you can just stall yes, the payload or staying up there. Yeah, you can. If you stay on this wooden, then you stop the payload. It's kind of you don't have to most of the time, but yeah, you can. If you want to troll an enemy a little, just why not? Well, actually, you're not really trolling. If you manage your shield around, uh, you you actually making them 
to push into the kill zone, you're baiting them to shoot your shield while while they're in the kill zone, and that creates a lot of opportunities for your team. Yeah, you're playing away from your team, you know, you're pulling away the attention. That's how your team is safe. Yeah, uh -huh. just set up now. You engage right away. That's the problem. Yeah, I like the engagement. Like you're being really aggressive and such. It's always really nice. Like do the same, but make sure you set up. Like imagine you're there and you look for the pin on the mouse. Yeah? The same okay, way. Yeah. Yeah. But then you also keep an eye on the enemy cooldowns too. Mm -hmm. And that's when I switch. I think. Right. That's when I stop. Yeah. The same idea can apply to even hog. It's just the. The, what any kind of angles you take in as a hog you're more self-sufficient so you might take more greedy angles sometimes as ryan you more reliant on the enemy or your team, yeah sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say that it's like yeah i play a lot like a lot better on roadhog than ryan yeah just because well, like with positioning like hooks mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so even with the hog, we still can look into this idea. You start here, okay, and it's either you set up good angle on the kill zone or you get a solo kill. So if you go after the Mauga, what is that exactly? Like, are we do we have good angle the kill zone or are we getting a kill here? Most likely. Uh, we're not in the kill zone, I guess. But we, I can try to get a kill, but the uh, life we can life grip him. Well, he can, but now I think he's out of line of sight. So you actually can get a kill, I think. Realistically, if the Maug is isolated just like that, it's it's fine for you. You can maybe fight him. The problem, well, there's a problem with Maug, though. He melts you pretty, pretty fast. Yeah. So you, you have to keep an eye on that. But if you have your I, I think I ended up dying here. Hmm. What am I wrong? It's just kind of tough, honestly. It's just really specific Mauga matchup. I honestly uh -huh. wouldn't wouldn't pay attention to him as much. Uh -huh. Especially, yeah, even when you're trying to get a kill, if you see there's a good option, he's pretty isolated. I don't think you can, unless your team uh -huh. is really... All around you because it, with a hog you just don't have as many defensive resources and he really does a lot of critical once he uh -huh. you burn yeah there's just the mauga you might get an environmental kill on him if you properly hook him on the, around the map yeah like you might do hook turn or something but here i think you most likely just set up good pressure on the kill zone or something like Mauga is there okay he might apply pressure my backline but you can do the same you might take what maybe take the castle get a solo kill on life fever that's possible by the way yeah kill somebody <clears throat> always nice if it's possible once you get rid of the life fever see you have the kills on there kind of well hmm. once your team is have angle a b set up Kind of the kill zone is gonna be around here, and you have your flank from here. You can do a lot of pressure, and the enemies they will have to choose: do they push this, do they push this, or do they deal with you? And they're kind of stuck. Yeah, if you look for the hook in the right moment, then it should be really good quality pressure. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. This is where... we just, yeah, we just, we just get like super old, so it's like... The last point is gonna be tough for you as a hog, because you don't have as many angles you can take. Uh -huh. Usually it's slightly better if you have Ryan in your pool. I think playing Ryan here makes more sense because there are more corners for you to use. It's kind of uh, less open as well, less... Mm. There are less structures with verticality as well, yeah. Like, you don't have to take high ground as much. Actually, that is something we can go over later as well. Just how do you how do you adapt the characters? Yeah, because it's pretty large uh -huh. team as well. Mm. Yeah, because, like, I don't... Because I had a game where I went 31-1 and one with Roadhog. You know? That's good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It's just, yeah, because, like, I feel like, I don't know, it's easier to play with Roadhog with, like, angles and, like, um, positioning um, where you are with Roadhog. You know? I th yeah, I feel like it's easier than Ryan. You know? Yeah, yeah, I, w I would say, uh, sure. Overall, in general, it might be. However, it's just be honest i don't think a lot of times the hog is really viable because it's kind of easy to um, shut down a lot of yeah. times but you still yeah you still can get decent value in general it's just on some maps yeah some maps and against general some compositions it's gonna be harder so yeah that's why we want to Look at that a little bit more. Just what here is more viable to play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe we can go with that later too. I'm just thinking. Let's we'll just kind of keep going the skill zone concept for now and think what we can do here, even on the third point. So we're playing hog still. Okay. Might be something else we could play. It doesn't matter. But what do you think? How do you set up your angles? How you force an enemy to push you, bait them to exist in the kill zone? What, what what's your opinion? What you should be doing with your position? Like with your setup, yeah. But like I should be like with Ryan, like the same thing kind of with Ryan, right? Where you like go the off angles, you know, like top right where the door is, or where the mega yeah. is on the left, top left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so too. It's kind of probably don't want to be in the main too much see you kind of mm -hmm. want to bait them in at the kill zone and then strike right but now you kind of looking for the hook which might be okay again this type of hook if you know you're confident you can get a kill you can do whenever if you're not mm -hmm. confident then you have to keep an eye on the kill zone once there's something's happening okay they walk in my kill zone for example now and then you like you have your team angle setup and then you start here you pull somebody and you drag them oh, okay yeah this okay. way yeah um, this works quite nice it's just with the ryan you would go in with your pin and then with the hog you can really just like pull them now pull them mm. in the kill zone yeah that's why like if you go here maybe hook somebody uh, do hook turn by the way that's why hook turn is it's helping out a lot because it's easier for your team to shoot things now you get a solo kill sure you just can rush going just like that you don't have your angle set up your kills on there but you get a solo kill good you get out so that's fine that's why it might be also easier for you as a hog because you can get more solo kills sometimes but uh -huh. yeah it's all important to understand the <clears throat> the kill zone yeah like for example here it, once uh you just keep in mind the rush you can't hook you just wait this. In. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so you probably have to wait and then you want to drag him in your kill zone that's good yeah you can always you can always do that like now if you know you can get a solo kill go for it now it's it's not the case with the maga here i think yeah like unless you kind of Drag him in, and then you, he's gonna stay there. You have to turn slightly later for that. It's just uh -huh. you, you turn a little bit too fast, and that's why he ended up uh, stuck at okay. the end of the wall. Yeah. So it's always like either I get a solo kill or I make it easy for my team to apply pressure, bait the enemy in the kill zone. Yeah, but the hog, it's kind of you hook them in your kill zone, yeah, like this way. Mm -hmm. There's a solo kill opportunity. You could, you could have, you could have hooked the sombra, so it's a nice attempt. Here, might get a solo kill on life fever. Okay, it's, it's fine. Now I can just wait it out and. I was trying to hug him off, but I guess that was too late. Yeah, just kind of the place we at as well. Well, if you hook him yeah. now and turn, yeah, you should end up behind this, right? You just have to make sure the turn is really fast. 
Yeah. Okay. But it's kind of like, see, the, this, this is where you gotta be careful. You confidently get a kill, but can you get away with this as well, right? You okay. start applying pressure, you start engaging, but see, this is enemy space, either. This is where they're gonna have a lot of resources set up and their angles set up. Where you, you don't have your any of your angles, so you have to be careful, yeah? Your team is just all around the place here, but what if we're trying to do the same play, maybe hook them around the map, yeah, but, uh, of the map, I mean, but make sure your angle's set up better. Yeah, like, what about if you sneak around here, for example? And let's say even they know that you're there, but see, what are you doing with that, really? You're baiting an enemy to push you while being in the kill zone. Um, yeah, while they're gonna be in the kill zone. Let's say somebody's gonna come this way, like, they're trying to push you out of A. They have to push in the red area well if they're gonna push left then you have to rotate though yeah but okay. there's a big chance they're gonna be entering this red space and then your team can really do a lot of pressure and if there's a big chance it's gonna be easier for you to do kills as well yeah see what i mean like better set up in the enemy's attention and the kill zone and like now it's just kind of purely go in yeah might be not, not the best cooldown trade, yeah. Now, you take an angle and think how you can get the stuff done. Especially in this case against Mauga, you really can just trade backlines. It's a matter of who is doing okay. it better. You just do it at the right time. Like, for example, even if you're sneaky, I like imagine you wait, you don't do anything. This guy's enter your kill zone, start pressure now. And then, okay. well, obviously, if there's no wall, it's even better. But then you just start pressure when your team have you know, their angle set up. They kind of do their own pressure. It's much better. Imagine you hook somebody and then you ult right now. And you boop this guys into the kill zone or something. Or maybe you get a solo kill on somebody because they're stuck in the wall. It's also nice. Yeah? That's, that's what I'm saying. Just make sure you're able to apply all that pressure. Okay, do you have any questions about that so far? No, it's pretty... Pretty kind of like... I guess... Easy to understand, hard to do mm -hmm. during the game. Yeah, good. Yeah, I think this is going to help out a lot because we didn't mention just... Sometimes you trying to apply the stuff that your team does. Yeah, I think this, this step is going to be important for us. Keeping an eye on the good setup. Okay, so if we sum summarize what do we got out of today so far? So what are the specifics you gotta be paying attention to in the game? First well the step, right? The first step scout. Okay. Yeah. So what do you scout? Second for? step. Uh what cooldowns they use, you know, what's what what's the score of the fight? basically yeah you can do, do we have enough resources do we have enough enemies do we you know basically everything uh second is setup right mm -hmm. setting up is uh i guess try to look for an angle right is that what it is setting up trying to look for an angle where your team can help you when you go in i guess i don't so know so angle angle where yeah yeah see this this is what i mentioned Angle where your team can help you. I'm just gonna use this term kill zone. You have what the kill zone is, is the location where your team can do a lot of pressure. Yeah, why they can do a lot of pressure? It's because they have angle set up, they have their range, they can use their cooldowns, right? This is what the kill zone is. You're trying to contribute to the kill zone. That's what I'm <laughs> gonna say. Uh, so first contribution is getting an angle mm, for you look for was why i was saying like look for flank angles more mm -hmm. so we kind of come from behind a little bit more you're not really by yourself or anything no you still keep an eye where your team is but this is what we're gonna keep in mind yeah like think about like you're playing tracer more basically. Find the kill zones, yeah. Mm hmm So you're doing this when you contribute into the kill zone. I think 
so yeah get an angle uh keep an eye <laughs> Yeah, but this that's more for scouting. When you keep an eye on if your angle set up and ready, I think that 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 is okay. mostly what is gonna be important to us. Mm. Scout if your angles are ready, and scout if enemies if enemy is committed. Yeah, like if enemy. He's actually yeah, like with, in the space. With, with, yeah, with Ryan, I feel like it's just a lot of waiting around for the right opportunity. I feel like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it's the same with the other things. It just depends on the specifics. Like, yeah, it depends on uh, the map and compositions and such. But yeah, even with other things, like as you could see with the hog, right? You look for early pressure there on the mog and you lost a lot of health and then because you lost a lot of health you were set up on the main angle which led to the situation where your team have to use none on you so you save and then you cannot apply pressure from the good angle either uh -huh. yeah. so it's just the same thing over and over yeah. it's important okay mm, scout if enemies are committed yeah and i'm just gonna say that like Bait an enemy to exist in a kill zone more overall. Yeah. Make so make sure enemy is in like the kill zone. Mm -hmm. Like uh what you said about being that high ground in the second point and yeah, making them like shoot at you walking yeah into the kill zone. Mm hmm Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's kind of you let enemy in the kill zone first here you're not applying any pressure or something let them step in and then destruct destruct them destruct an enemy and mostly how you destruct it through the pressure though yeah you, it's not just you purely shielding you of course you can do that as well but ideally look for the offensive way of pressure like the same way you did pin swing and everything that's all good just don't skip the setup step and should be should be fine. Mm hmm Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, so apply pressure. Okay, anything else? Yeah, anything else we got so far? Um I, I'm engagement, I guess. Uh I I think. I don't know if you think that, but I feel because you said like yeah, I go to Scout. And I go to the gauges, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like with the engages, I got that down. <laughs> yeah, you got the down, I think, yeah. That's, that's pretty... We engage pretty good. And the, there's a, we do, we're doing a lot of practice play as well. I like it. You, so you can keep the same theme, uh, the same thing going, yeah? Engagement's mm -hmm. good. And resource management, when you engaging, is good. It's just... The problem is you do lose a lot of resources because you're not set up. That that that's all. So that's literally like the most important problem I have with like yeah. my gameplay is setting it up. Yeah, it seems seems for now, yeah. Like especially once you try try to fix this timing issue, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see like why why it's important, yeah. Like if you're not too aggressive, right, then your team dies. But if you are aggressive then you die. Then you die. Yeah, and so then the you team have dies. To, yeah, you have to find balance. It's, it, this this balance there is like you said <laughs> yeah, it's enough. hard. Yeah. <laughs> you, you you have to make sure it's kinda of not not you with your team or not you just purely going in. No. You have to be away with you away from your team, but apply pressure once they're ready, yeah, once uh, once you set up properly. And that was our main thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's mostly that and I think for the next time we can go over Yeah, just adapting characters, how to do that more effectively. We still can do what if you another characters more, especially Winston Sig. Hog, yeah, okay. because we're mostly, <sighs> mostly done right. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, let's see how you do at the skill zone first, because it's, uh, I don't think it's like way too easy to, uh. to implement, but 
yeah, if you get it right, it should be okay. I, w I, w I would still keep 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 that keep that in mind. So I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, like let's let's okay. watch for the kills. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Um, or yeah, do you have any questions? Something like that. Um, 